Guess who's back? Back again. Hey everybody, it's your girl Erin B and welcome back to my channel. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, you guys know that I'm prepping to get ready to be a first time pattern tester. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, I already went ahead and bought a bunch of yarns these were all purchased from Hobie Yarns or Hobie.com. So I've just gone ahead and picked out a bunch of different colorways in their Amigo DK weight yarn, but I can finally spill the beans and tell you guys that I will be pattern testing for Elizations. So I'm really excited because I get to pattern test this new Huda vest that they came out with. And I already have, you know, my little pattern here pulled up on my computer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get into this. But as you guys know, I am not a professional knitter. That's not a secret here on my channel. I'm very beginner. I think in my entire life, I've only ever knitted maybe like five or six different projects. So I definitely fall into the beginner category, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start casting on stitches. And pretty much throughout this video, I'm just going to walk you guys through my process of creating this vest without spilling any of the beans. But something that I really wanna focus on for this pattern testing video is how I'm going to try to like switch up the different colors within the vest. I know there's like different classes and stuff that you can take on how to alternate your colors and like mesh them very beautifully within your project and kind of like my attempt at blending and meshing the colors as seamlessly as possible because I don't want this vest to be too like extreme stripes. I really want things to flow a little bit better and change up throughout the pattern. Okay, let's just go ahead and get into it. All right, so like I was mentioning earlier, I'm just going to be double stranding with two DK weight yarns and I've already got my circular knitting needles ready to go. So let's start casting on. For this method, I don't wanna use the long tail cast on just because I never really know exactly how much yarn to measure out and I don't really wanna be pulling out too much yarn and causing a gigantic mess on my bed. So let's see. How do I, hmm, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I've literally just spent the last 20 seconds trying to get my needles into the first stitch. I probably cast it on a little bit too tight. I don't wanna force it. Oh, there she goes. Nope, I have to undo it. I've already connected my circular knitting needles, you know, in the round. My yarn is working in the round. So this part of the pattern, I'm just going to be making a ribbed section. So I'm just gonna be creating, you know, cute little ribbing. Hello, I'm hopping back on here because as you guys can see, I spent about two and a half hours last night just working on the ribbing for this vest so far, and I'm really proud of myself. So, so far, this is what she's looking like, and she looks absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, I am double stranding with this DK weight yarn, so it's working up nice and thick. So at this point, now that I have the bottom part of the vest done, it's time to start working upwards and pretty much for the rest of the pattern it's going to remain the same i'm really just going to continue to work with my circular needles in the round but at this point i get to kind of change up the stitch that i'm using because i'm no longer working with ribbing so now i'm getting a little bit nervous because it's time to start changing out my colors like you guys saw earlier i have i think about like I don't know, like six different colors that I can choose from. Like I said, I'm going to start working on the body of the vest. So I'm just gonna switch on over to this nice like beigey tan color. It's just a little bit more of an earth tone than this nice creamy one. So I think in order to achieve the technique that I want and then me just like flailing a pair of scissors around, that's not safe. I don't know what I'm doing. But I think at this point, I'm just going to take one of my cream strands, leave a nice long tail in case I need to weave it in or anything, <laughs> but I'm just going to snip off one of the double strands like so. And now when I go ahead and start my next row, I'm going to drop this color 
and attach on my tan shade. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take the two different color strands and just wrap them around my hook as if nothing happened before. And there's my first stitch. And again, I'm not sure if I'm really using the right technique that it takes to like blend and mix the colors, but I feel like maybe once every row or a couple times every row, I will kind of like twist or change up the order of the yarn. That way it doesn't wrap the same way every single time on the hook. So as you guys can see here, just by keeping my yarn in the exact same order, I do have this tan color on the left hand side for all of my stitches. So I'm probably gonna go like another 20 stitches and then I'm gonna change up the order of the yarn and hopefully that might give it more of like a blended effect. If you guys have any tips or tricks for me on how to blend your colors when you're knitting a little bit better, please leave them for me down below because I haven't really come across any videos or tutorials that can help me out. So at this point, I'm gonna get a little bit more speedy and I'm gonna work up a few more rows and meet you guys back here. And so far, this is like what one and a half rows of double stranding with two different shades is looking like. So hopefully you guys are able to see that sometimes my colors do like switch placement spots on the needle. So hopefully if I continue to use this technique, it will give me an ombre style top, which is what I'm going for. So I'll update you guys in a little bit when I've switched out a couple more colors and added a few more rows. But here is the inside of the work. I freaking love how the garter stitch looks. Like, look at that. So cute. Hello again. It's day three of working on this vest and I'm actually really proud of what I've worked up so far. I wanna say I've worked on it about five or six hours so far. I'm not the fastest knitter as you guys know, but this is what I've come up with so far. So as you guys can see here, I have been trying this new technique of mine for blending, or as one of my subscribers told me, I think it's called fading when it comes to knitting. But anyways, this is what it looks like so far. So as you guys can see, I have been loving this really gorgeous, like burnt orangey rust color. I've mixed in just a little touch of yellow. And you guys can also see, I do have a slight pop of this like hot coral neon pink. But as I was mentioning earlier, I didn't wanna to add too much of the yellow and the rest in the pink just because I do want a majority of this to be these like light cream and tan colors. And I really want these brighter colors to be more of like an accent. And I just worked up a few rows using these two contrasting colors. And I wanna say like every eighth or 10th stitch, I would kind of flip and change the order of the yarn. That way when I'm yarning over on my needles, the order of the yarn shifts and changes that way. Like I said, every single stitch is not exactly the same. So hopefully you guys are really able to see so for example, like right here, some of these stitches, like 10 of them in a row, have the exact same pattern. And then just kind of by like flipping and changing the order of the yarn. So it gives it a little bit more of like a blended technique. And after I've worked up about three or four rows in the same exact colorway, I will cut off one of the strands and then replace it with a new color. That way, again, you still get like this mixed technique or one of the yarns that's carried up into the next few rows. And then again, after like three or four more rows, I'll cut off that older yarn and and mix on a newer one so and I'm honestly not too sure if this is how everybody else in the knitting community achieves this blending technique but that's honestly just how I've been going about it again if you guys have better recommendations for me please leave these tips and tricks for me down below but again a lot of this inspiration of this blended or mixed technique does come from Elization so go check out her page and see all of the crazy colors that they've used but at this point now that I have half of my stitches moved on to the stitch marker or stitch holder. I'm now gonna start working, I believe, on the front panel of the vest. So I've just been following their pattern, doing the best that I can to stick to it. And honestly, they made the pattern so simplified, there's not really too much that you can get confused with. So, so far I have had no hiccups myself. And once I get done with the first panel, I'll probably hop back on, show you guys what it's looking like so far. So I'm just taking some time, enjoying myself, working with this beautiful knit stitch. I love how this looks. And also check out the inside or like the wrong side of my work. I've never really been a fan of like garter stitch looking, but this is pretty darn cute.
So it's been quite a few days since I last popped on here, but I'm really excited to show you guys the progress that I have so far with this vest. So this is what the front panel is looking like. And I think it worked up absolutely beautifully. I've been using this like blending technique for quite a while and I feel like I kind of got the hang of it. So I'm just gonna continue on with whatever little technique that I've been using. And as you guys can see here, I do have my two front like little shoulder straps that I finished up here. And as you guys can see, they are currently held onto these like little stitch markers because I guess there is a technique that I have to use at the end in order to stitch the back strap to the front strap. So I'm gonna wait until then, and then I can finally cast off these bad boys. But here is the front panel, and believe it or not, guys, I'm almost, almost completely done with this back panel. There are so many freaking ends hanging off. I still have to weave all of these in. And as you guys can see here, I am on my very last stint of this back panel, which is just making those two little tie straps. And then I can go ahead and join my two straps here at the very top shoulder seam. And then all that's left is for me to add the ribbing around the neckline. And hopefully that last step is a lot easier than I'm imagining. I personally don't know how to pick up stitches yet, but something else that I also want wanted to point out about the Huda vest pattern is that they included like video tutorials of how to do every single step. So thankfully for like a beginner knitter like me, I actually really relied on these videos just to make sure that I was doing all the steps correctly. Oh, and another really cool thing about this pattern is that Elizations also included tips on how to work clean edges. So as you guys know, when you start to work like in a stockinette type of stitch, usually your work like curls in on you because you don't really have like ribbing to keep it solidified on both edges. So thankfully within the pattern, she explains and has like another video tutorial on how to work clean edges. That way my work isn't curling inward. So I don't know if you guys are able to tell with this like terrible lighting that I have going on here, but I have been working clean edges all along the very edge of like the armhole. And once I get up to the shoulders, I'll work it there too. But it's really nice that for once, I don't have like my work curling in on me. And I think that it looks super dark and spiffy so if you guys are interested in purchasing the huda vest pattern you do get quite a handful of tips within the pattern like i said the clean edges she explains so at this point i'm just going to continue to work on my next section and hopefully the next time i see you guys i will have the ribbing for the collar finished up and i can showcase to you guys my final huda vest let's get into it no more time to waste my deadline is coming up on me the clock is ticking so let's go ahead and work All right, everybody, here is the finished Huda vest. I hope you guys like this. I worked really hard on it. And honestly, the pattern was very basic and simple to follow. I literally had zero to none hiccups. I think there was only one time I had a misunderstanding and that was because I didn't decrease properly because I wasn't counting my stitches. So if y'all are ever trying to follow a pattern, honestly, tip number one, count your stitches and make sure that you're working the pattern properly. Honestly, after I had my little hiccup, I made sure to work up my back panel freaking perfectly to the T and I ended up with all the correct number of stitches, nothing was out of place and I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. And honestly, this vest is a lot more cropped on me than I thought it was going to turn out, but I'm honestly super happy with it. For my body size, I have a very short torso because I'm only at five foot tall and zero inches. So this actually hits me at just the right point. So here's my belly button. And this is where all the measurements end up on me for a size small vest. So this thing, because I worked it up with a stockinette stitch, even just like with knitting in general, all your items are super, super stretchy. So it's really easy to get on. It's very form fitting and flattering. And I'm really proud of myself for accomplishing this like fading kind of grading technique with 
with the different changes of colors of the yarn so here she is nice and close up this is what I'm working with and honestly like the decreases around the armholes and everything work up so nice I was actually a little bit worried too that this vest was gonna come in like a little bit too much but surprise surprise she knows what she's doing hello and this is where it ends up on me again for a size small I'm also a huge fan of like this neckline within the pattern she does let you choose how short or long you would like your ribbing up here at the neckline to be and of course when I'm wearing a racer back bra you cannot see anything through or underneath this vest so i think it looks really really great and guys if you guys are interested in getting or making yourself a beautiful vest just in time for spring because i live in california and it's already starting to get hot so make sure that you go grab this pattern if you guys would like to again thank you to elizations for letting me knit pattern test for you this was really really fun so much fun i hope i get to do it again in the future i have a little bit more confidence now when it comes to making knit pieces and i'm hoping i can you know pattern test a little bit more in the future when i have time but here she is in all of her glory and I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to add more patterns within my pattern testing series so this is just the beginning but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and sign off now I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll be seeing you all very soon bye <laughs>